This is Sean with Voices of Racing, and I'm speaking to an individual that has an organization that memorializes the racing industry for the state of Indiana. It's Indiana Racing Memorial Association, and it's Mark Utzler. Mark, how are you doing today, and uh, where are you located? Doing great, Sean. Thanks for uh, having me on. I'm in Linden, Indiana, between Lafayette and Crawfordsville, on the west side of the state. Okay, so we're going to get into this a little bit, and the first slide we have is off of your Facebook, and these are a few of the older cars. The point of your organization is to create these, uh, I would call them metal marker signs that have information listed on them that showcase the history of a driver or a track. Um, is, that, is that a good way to sum it up? That's good, yeah. Our mission is uh, celebrating Indiana's racing heritage. And our principal uh, uh, program is the Historic Marker Legacy Program. We, we call it that. And you're right. That's uh, that's what we're most known for. And we have uh, 50 uh, up in Indiana uh, currently, and then uh, four additional ones in different parts of the country through our national program, which is called the American Racing Memorial Association, which is part of IRMA. Arma is a part of Irma, and so uh, we do that, and our Facebook page is another way that we celebrate racing heritage, and with those two photos that uh, uh, that are from that, and uh, just last uh, last May, our uh, Facebook page had like uh, a million and a half uh, visits, and about 800,000 uh, engagements, engagements being, if you're kind of in social media biz, it's a uh, someone who liked it, commented on it, or forwarded it. So we're uh, kind of blown away by uh, uh, people who are clicking in and, and uh, liking and, and, and really following what we do. So one of the things that we hope to add to this beautiful memorial organization is being able to actually do these stories so people can listen, watch, and, and hear the backstory of the different markers, and even include you know, possibly on the marker itself, a QR code that somebody could tap and then go and, and watch and hear the history of it besides just reading along. Um, you know, and that's, we, we do this a lot with, with different race groups and teams, you know, for doing their stories and even incorporating sponsors uh, for them to be showcased because usually they're just a sticker on the car. So it's a way for them also to tell their point of view. So this one right here is at Winchester. This is in 2014 on the July 4th, and it was their 100-year celebration of the track. Is that correct? That's correct, 100 years to the day. They, it opened uh, uh, in 1914 uh, on July 4th. So we were there on July 4th, 2014, to unveil the marker and, uh, and celebrate the centennial. And the smaller picture at the bottom, is that Bill Shaw Jr.? Yeah, that's uh, Bill Shaw, Wilbur Shaw Jr., and this is at the Boyle uh, racing headquarters, of course, uh, where the Maserati uh, uh, was developed and the uh, the replica and the hauler are there as part of a, a display in uh, at the Boyle Racing Headquarters, which uh, that historic building, which uh, I think the uh, Guggenhaus uh, uh, Brewing uh, Company is located in now. All right. So if you could put a percentage on the amount of markers that when you've done the reveal that the actual person that is involved is at the marker comparison to the number that you're on in somebody that's already gone and passed away? Right, well, uh, great question. And I'm not sure right offhand because we usually have someone from the family, if uh, you know the person has already passed, um, that uh, uh, that's represented and usually speaks and shares their memories of, the, of their relatives. So we, we are, are very overt about trying to do that. And uh, and always seeking, uh, in the case of a of a person we're honoring, uh, seeking the the family's permission. Uh, we've never been uh, uh, turned down. But if if the family ever uh, that we were wanting to to honor ever uh, did not want that, then uh, we would move on and we would honor that. So, what's your history in racing, and and what made of you motivated you originally to help grow this organization and start it? Yeah, Brian Hassler and I, a friend of mine from college. Um, uh, we're talking, uh, it was nearing the, uh, I think the 60th anniversary of the plane crash that, uh, claimed Wilbur Shaw senior and, and two others, uh, near, uh, Decatur, Indiana. And, um, uh, talking about a way of, uh, commemorating that event, um, uh, and, and those lives that were lost. And, uh, 
and Brian said, well, I, I think we could do markers uh, uh, throughout the state because uh, we've got so much uh, racing history and heritage that could be celebrated. So that was the uh, genesis of it, a uh, conversation in his living room. And a few weeks later, we had our first meeting in December of 2013. And then in July, the first marker at Winchester, which you see on the screen. And um, myself, I'm a fan, uh, is the, the way that I uh, entered uh, entered this sphere, I, I guess, uh, since 1965. I've attended uh, every Indy 500 and about a I think a hundred and some consecutive races at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and just uh, really love it. I'm also a co-chair of the uh, AES 500 Festival Parade and part of the Citizen Speedway Committee, which uh, raises money through its lap prize sponsor program. So were you able to, and this is a little bit of a side note, but to check out what we did for the Unsers for the Unser Project at unserstories.com? Mm -hmm. Yes. There was uh, close to 50 interviews with race legends about their memories of being with the Unsers and racing with the Unsers from Mario and Michael, um, Doug Bowles even, you know, it was, it, was a very, it was a very cool way to hear from the others the perspectives of how the Unsers affected the racing industry. And I think with this, it's, it's also really neat to be able to not just hear the stories of the, of, you know, the drivers of the tracks and have it printed on you know, the, these markers, but but also to be able to showcase them out to the public so they can really learn a lot more of the history of it. So um, obviously these aren't free, right? You got to get funding to be able to cover right. these. Right. So, what, what, what's what's it like a general ballpark? Are they 5,000 or like what's a, a number you got to really hit to get it in the ground, get it made and in yeah. the ground? Uh Around 3,500, and that depends. About, it's about uh, uh, 3,000. Depends if there are photos on them. Some of our early ones, we did not use photos, and then uh, uh, our board of directors thought photos were a good idea, and, and a lot of the honoree uh, uh, families and and uh, and sponsors thought that was a good idea too. So that cost a little uh, money in production time uh, and cost to do that. So around that, uh, amount of money is what it costs per marker. Yeah. I think a good uh, twist with this is that company could sponsor marker and be on video interview with history of marker itself that the QR code linked to the marker, then company could get exposure forever. Sure. You know, to it also on, on the site. But anyway, I want to get into a couple other things here. So we're going to go all the way to the top with, Roger Penske. So yes. what, what, when was the first time you were able to meet Roger? What was that situation? And what are these here with your wife, Therese? What, what were these situations? Oh, sure. Uh, both of those photos are from uh, Indy 500 Victory Celebration. The, uh, the one on the, on the right, um, uh, I forget which year it was. It's when his team won uh, the 500 and uh, the victory celebration was at the uh, at the speedway and then the one on the left is from uh, last year uh, at the jw marriott uh, at the victory celebration the first time i had an opportunity to meet him was actually the day that the sale was announced i was uh, uh, able to be uh, in the media center uh, with many others uh, when when that was announced and then we went down uh, to uh, pit road and and uh, they did some pictures out there. So I was able to get some pictures and, and uh, it was my first time meeting him. And uh, I'm just a big fan of uh, how hands-on he is and detail oriented. And it, uh, I think he just turned 87 uh, within the last week or so. And I know he's had a kidney transplant and he sleeps about four hours a night and has a, you know, this boundless energy and it's not uncommon to see him on a ladder straightening a, a, a banner or uh, moving a trash can around and he really takes pride in what he does not just at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway but throughout his organization so I think it's a uh, it's something that uh, you know uh, I try to emulate in my life and uh, I think can serve as an example of uh, how you be a leader and not just a manager. I was with this is a fun little side note but Toddy Rutman like mm -hmm. Rutman, you know winning the 552 yeah I was with Toddy going into the track for um I, I believe it was a Brickyard weekend but it was like IndyCar Brickyard dual weekend that they also ran yeah. the road course and when we got on the shuttle bus from the turn two suites and then got underneath and then came into the track Penske pulled in front of us on his golf cart 
and he literally was right in front of us and we were kind of joking in the car that we're grafting Penske <laughs> in the speedway. So that was uh, that, that was pretty great. All right, this next shot here, you got Howie Bell and also Doug Bowles, and this is in Brownsburg off of North Green Street. Um, just just tell me a little bit about this marker and who else is in the uh, photo. Yeah, standing next to me is the president of the Brownsburg Town Council. Uh, we've partnered with the town of Brownsburg, and uh, uh, there's actually a website uh, about the Brownsburg Racing Memorial Trail. And there was uh, a few markers that we had, would put in town, and uh, and the town was excited about that because it realizes it has a, a pretty significant uh, racing heritage, not just from the past, but also uh, teams that are located there uh, now. So there are five markers in the town of Brownsburg, uh, one for Larry Rice, one for Bill uh, Driver, uh, one for Bill Marvel, um, who is a USAC official, Howdy Bells, uh, Robbie Stanley. Uh, and, um, and then uh, there will be one installed next month um, for Dick Jordan, also a USAC official. This was uh, in August, uh, about the hottest day of the year. I think the heat index was 113 degrees, and they had planned a a, a whole big celebration, and, and they had to wave off of that because of the hot temperatures. But we went ahead and uh, uh, with the unveiling, and so that's us uh, at 61 North Green Street, which is in front of the Brownsburg Town Hall. Um, and uh, that's where Howdy's marker uh, now stands. So if you are traveling through Brownsburg on State Road 267, which is uh, Green Street. Uh, you can see it there on the east side. Okay. All right. So this next one, you're with the mayor of Crawfordsville. Uh, yeah. Uh, talk about this image and and both both of the markers. Which are the two markers? One's, was it Johnny Rutherford? And then what was the other one? Right. Uh, this is Howdy Wilcox on the left. And that's uh, myself, Mayor Todd Barton, and Brian Hassler, uh, the co-founder. Brian has since passed away. Uh, he and I uh, were the co uh, are the co-founders uh, of uh, of Irma, and uh, this was Howdy Wilcox. This is in May of um, of 2015, uh, and our, and was the second marker after Winchester. And uh, we just really appreciated the mayor's enthusiasm. We met with him uh, the preceding August, shortly after we had done the uh, the Winchester unveil. And he was excited. He remembered uh, Crawfordsville being a, a, what was called a banner community, which is where they used to put banners across uh, major roads and some of the cities around Indianapolis saying the race is coming up and when qualifying were and remembered the Holiday Inn at Crawfordsville being sold out a uh, three day minimum and things. He said, we need to bring that back. So uh, the city of Crawfordsville actually sponsored uh, this marker and it's in downtown Crawfordsville, the Marie Canine uh, Plaza. Um, and um, uh, and some of uh, Howdy's uh, uh, family uh, members were were there as well. Howdy is uh, a Crawfordsville native, so that's how that that came to be. And uh, in Crawfordsville, the 1919 winner, and uh, I believe it was a national, and the car was owned by the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And then uh, flipping over to the to the right, uh, we see the Johnny Rutherford marker. That's Bill Blaylock, who is the sponsor of that. Bill is a a great benefactor of uh, our work. Uh, he's now retired from uh, uh, Texas Instruments. He was a gen uh, the vice president and general tax counsel uh, for the corporation. And uh, Johnny, next to him, the mayor of River Oak, which is actually the sub uh, uh, not, uh, the suburb of, uh, of Fort Worth, which is where Johnny lives. And this is in a park that has since been renamed Johnny Rutherford Park. So that's pretty neat. And Therese, my wife, and I, uh, that was... Uh, when we uh, un uh, unveiled that, and that was our second uh, ARMA, American Racing Memorial Association marker. Well, speaking of your wife, here's her receiving the Sagamore Award from Doug Bowles. Why don't you talk about this moment? And that's, you know, pretty much the top award uh, for anybody in the, in Indiana get presented from the governor for lifetime achievement. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, that was very special. Um uh, Governor Pence had uh, had issued that, uh, awarded that in uh, uh, May of 2016, and um, this is during the Citizen Speedway Committee, which is the the group that uh, 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 kind of administers and promotes and raises uh, lap prize uh, funds through the lap prize program, and uh, so its annual meeting in the pagoda, 
and uh, you know, and thinking about uh, what would be a, a special time and place to to present that to her. Um, uh, I thought of that and I asked Doug if he would, and he uh, uh, very graciously accepted. So I think it was the first one he had had, had the opportunity to present. So that uh, that was a great uh, great time. What were some of the things that your wife accomplished that really made her qualify for getting the the award? Sure, she has. Uh, she's a physical therapist at Franciscan uh, in uh, in Crawfordsville, Indiana, and has been in, in Lafayette. Uh, so uh, a lot of professional service there, and and serving uh, her profession. Uh, she's now part of uh, of the uh, had been on the Indiana Board of Podiatric Medicine, is now on the Indiana Physical Therapy Board and has represented uh, Indiana on the Federation uh, of, uh, of State uh, Physical Therapy Boards, uh, which uh, kind of looks at licensed reciprocity and, and uh, the emerging telemedicine and, and uh, you know, getting all of that, uh, trying to keep up with the technology that's upon us. And she has uh, also been involved with the Arthritis Foundation and a uh, church organist and just involved in the community in a lot of different ways. So it was nice that uh, the governor uh, chose to recognize her in that way. That's great. All right, so here's uh, something about your son, an article that um, was in the Clubhouse magazine for the month of May. And just talk, talk about this article and, and what was uh, basically accomplished with this. Sure, it was uh, his recollection of uh, what it's like uh, uh, the month of May, and this is when he was in uh, in first grade, uh, and uh, Clubhouse is a publication of the Focus on the Family uh, Ministry, and and so about the year before this was published, the, you know, the way magazines are, uh, the, uh, they had arranged uh, for one of the Speedway photographers to uh, follow him around uh, during a day that he was there on a uh, uh, qualifying uh, weekend, and uh, we would uh, always go to uh, one of the IndyCar Ministry Chapel services uh, to start our day at the track. And that, that photo of the of us with our daughter Abigail uh, when she was very young. She's now a junior at Butler, so you can tell this has a little age to it. Uh, and Bob Hills, who was chaplain at the time of IndyCar Ministry, um, and then it just kind of talks about uh, about his experiences and and uh, and what it's like to uh, kind of be. Uh, be around the speedway during the month of may that's great so this other picture um above the uh, above your, your your logo for the organizations with you and your wife and doug bulls what was the uh situation there it is yeah at the, that was the 100 days out party last year uh so 100 days before the uh, 107th indy 500 and uh, uh it's a event they didn't have it this year because of the uh, nba all-star uh, game uh, happening on the same weekend, and they, they put efforts on the, the packing party, the million meals, and uh, rather than having this, but this was uh, for the last few years since the 100th running, uh, or 100 days before the 100th running, uh, was an event uh, that would uh, be uh, of an evening on 100 days out, and I think on, on the uh, before the 100th race, we were actually out there uh, at midnight, so when the clock struck 12 or 12 or one then hey we were finally at 100 days until the 100th running and uh, so it, it's uh, always been a fun event i hope they they bring it back but uh, it was a, a a great time to come and celebrate and uh, boy the, the next 100 days go by pretty fast yeah it's kind of like getting ramped up for the whole year really it really is and you can feel the gravitational pull of race day start <laughs> starting about then uh it just uh, stuff starts happening and and uh, people get excited and uh, and everyone's smiling more all right so here's a beautiful shot of the family so uh, just describe the year and uh who's in the shot yeah thank you uh on on the front my son andrew and uh, our daughter or our son andrew and our daughter abigail and then myself in the back and and therese uh in the uh i believe it's the uh, tower terrace suite the the first suite um we were an interesting story about this. Uh, uh, this was uh, the the Grand Prix, uh, the Formula One Grand Prix, which was about at that time three weeks after the Indy 500. So uh, we're always, you know, super involved with uh, with events during the month of May, and and uh, just kind of looked forward to coming and just uh, hanging out, and watching the race, not really having, you know, any official uh, kind of uh, function to do, and and just enjoying being there. 
And so we were sitting in the seats below this suite in the public uh, public seats. And um, my wife had gone to a concession stand and she came back and said, someone's handed me four tickets uh, to the suite. And uh, and I thought, oh, you know, th this must be uh, a joke or something. And I looked at the tickets and I thought, oh, wow, they're real. Uh, so we went up there and uh, the person who uh, owned the suite um, always looked for families who might be there and to, and to invite them up and spend the race in the suite as just kind of a gift, just kind of randomly would, would look for people. We happened to be the people he saw, a family there, and it was a real hot day, so it was it was welcome to to get in some air conditioning as well. And uh, so, and, and it resulted in a great photo uh, with the pagoda in the background and turned out to be, I think, the final um, Formula One race uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to date. All right, so let's do some math on that. You got yeah. a possible 300,000 people at a race, right? Yeah, right. You got every race, you got all the suites, but the chances of the people being gifted the tickets and not know it going into the day that you're randomly picked out of the crowd, that's like one in a billion or what? I mean, like, you know, if you do the math on this, so that that's a very unique, lucky situation that you guys. That was uh that was a real blessing. Yeah, it, it, uh, it really was. It's always kind of been uh, uh, my, you know, hope that sometime we'd see, uh, we, we'd visited suites before for fundraisers or during practice or qualifying, but to, to see a race day, you know, any race day from the, the suite, uh, suite uh, would be a special thing. And, and we got to do it. Yeah. Okay. So just as a recap, how many markers do you have in the state? We have 50 in Indiana um, and then four uh, in other states, um, two in Illinois. Oh, I'm sorry, five in other states, 55 altogether, two in Illinois, uh, two in California and one in Texas. Okay. So who would be somebody that maybe is on the horizon for getting one? Um. We have a uh, standards and selection uh, uh, team of our executive committee that that vets those. I can tell you uh, what we're planning this year, uh, and the dates have not been all set yet. Um, are uh, Bob Jenkins, the broadcaster uh, uh, from Liberty, and uh, one for John Andretti at Newcastle uh, uh, Karting Track. And then, of course, we'll have the one for Dick Jordan and uh, in Brownsburg um, that will be coming up. Uh, uh, and then also uh, one for Cummins uh, Corporation in Columbus, Indiana. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we look forward to being able to help save the stories of these markers so people can actually, you know, listen and, and watch and help, you know, share them on digital media and all that different stuff and on your site. Um, you know, we also can do the Legends Life Stories. It's, you know, we've done over 500 interviews and documentaries at this point, but this is really kind of tapping into the, the key people that have been selected to really be honored forever through a sign in a location in the state. And that's, that's pretty commendable um, that you guys have, you know, grown it to where it's at today. Is there anything else you'd like to say before uh, we close out? No, just to really appreciate uh, the, the support. Uh, the people have given us. We've uh, had an average of uh, 200 people per unveiling event um, uh, come. Uh, so, you know, you multiply that uh, times 54, 55, and it's a lot of people who've actually been there to uh, to see the uh, see the unveilings happen. Uh, and that, that also has just kind of uh, blown us away. It's a it's just a great time to get together with you know fellow racers and and people who want to share in that and the, the work that you're doing is uh you know complements that too it, it as you say it continues to live you know in a, in a in another <clears throat> uh dimension you know our hopes were that these uh these markers will help inspire the the future drivers and engineers and, you know team members and maybe team owners and and fans of tomorrow that they'll help that today as people w are walking by and maybe reading them that they'll be inspired by uh by that and uh, and continue to support uh not just uh ims but you know all of indycar and, and, and other forms of racing too and we're really passionate uh about that and the and the impact that it has on 
on emerging technologies and uh, and making a difference uh, in our world. I think one thing that'd be really fun, and this is kind of a scavenger hunt idea, but if if people could maybe even from your site access a map and drive to the location, have some fun in the town, go yeah. to the marker and learn, and you know try to in a weekend within an area of the state knock out a few markers and hear some stories and you know really really hear the backstory but get to see indiana along that road absolutely i mean it's similar you know to brownsburg you can you can see five of them there and then the, the hoosier heartland corridor that uh, kind of connects lafayette to fort wayne um there's sort of a, a trail if you will there there's a marker for george souders who uh, rookie in 1927 won the race in lafayette and then one for jimmy daywalt in wabash um, and one for uh, uh, Gene Hartley in Roanoke, which is uh, just outside of Fort Wayne. And then two in Fort Wayne, the first USAC race was at the Coliseum, where there's a marker. And then K and K Insurance, which is uh, really big to a uh, company that's been involved in racing. Uh, and I think it's located on the west side of town. So you know, you go up the Wabash uh, 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 Hoosier Heartland rather corridor, and uh, and there's some there. And and likewise on this part of the state. Uh, you know, Crawfordsville to Petersburg, where the bricks were made, Jungle Park, where we had a thousand people come uh, for that marker unveiling and uh, and down to Terre Haute for the action track and Don Smith. Uh, so you can, you can kind of put together little day trips. So we're hoping to, to market those out and uh, wanted to also mention our partnership with with Crown Hill Cemetery. We have a marker there about the racing legends who are interred there. And there's a, a web based uh, program where you can. Uh, select people you might want to see and it'll give you a walking or driving sequence and there's uh, like audio snippets that have been recorded by uh, people like Howdy and, and Scott Hoke and uh, and uh, Donald Davidson uh, that uh, tell a little bit more maybe than what's what's on the marker so very very similar to the the idea and concept that, that you have. Yeah we want to be able to have them see those back images too and those cars they race. Yeah. Just yeah what we have on screen here those are some it looks like an old maybe an old sprint and maybe an old offy lay down possibly but uh but anyway mark i appreciate your time and your your website is racingmemorial.org is that correct that is correct and then our facebook page is simply indiana racing memorial association uh, irma uh and uh, i think you can find us that way and um uh, that's where a lot of the action is bob gates uh Next year of administering that and always has great photos and and information and stories to share on that. And so that's that's probably where our largest following is at the moment. Okay. Well, ours is at voicesofracing.com and we can be contacted at voices of racing at Gmail uh, to be able to help any group preserve their history. And Mark, I really appreciate your time today and I look forward to the road ahead. All right. Thank you, Sean. Likewise. You got it.